Nanobots have been the holy grail among all kinds of scientists for almost a century at this point. Both their previously thought impossibility, and their almost limitless abilities and good that they could offer humanity. The blunt instruments at our disposal provide one of the most difficult obstacles when it comes to investigating and altering the brain. Breakthroughs in nanotechnology, however, are expected to change that in the near future, according to the field's leading researchers. Neuroscience has undergone a technological revolution in the last few decades as a result of rapid advancements and amazing new capabilities in brain-machine interfaces and groundbreaking new methods such as functional magnetic resonance imaging, which allows for the tracking of neural activity across the entire brain, and optogenetics, which allows for the control of individual neurons with light. Welcome to today's episode of AI News. In this episode, I will show you the new nanotechnology that is already about to be used in clinical trials, what awesome features and abilities beyond medical treatments these new nanobots will have, and finally, what it means for the future of society when we have tiny robots living inside of us being able to take care of anything from tumors to enabling full-dive virtual reality. Despite recent advances in brain-computer interfaces, like as Elon Musk's Neural, we are still a long way from being able to record or activate vast sections of the brain at the single neuron level. Being able to do so might have far-reaching consequences for our understanding of the brain, as well as our capacity to improve its function and treat disease. According to the authors of a new research published in Nature Methods, the growing area of nano-neuro holds the answer to overcoming this divide. According to the researchers, the unique features and small size of nanomaterials might allow them to explore neuronal networks in fundamentally new ways and at previously inconceivable dimensions. Nanotechnology has also been around for a while. Some credit Nobel laureate Richard Feynman, who gave a presentation titled There's Plenty of Room at the Bottom to a group of scientists at the American Physical Society Conference at Caltech in 1959. In his address, Feynman, known as the father of nanotechnology, presented a theoretical technique that would allow researchers to manage solitary atoms or unique molecules. This method, which had not yet been created, would eventually become the primary application of nanoscience. It wasn't until 1981 when microscopes capable of seeing individual atoms were produced. These early scanning tunneling microscopes reached previously unheard of accuracy and magnification. By allowing researchers to picture individual atoms, they provided credence to the notion that nanotechnology was a viable option. The most apparent use of nanotechnology is simply shrinking the conventional neuroscience toolkit. A slew of new nanoprobe and nanoelectrode designs, many of which use the same technologies that have enabled the downsizing of computer chips, are allowing researchers to record from orders of magnitude more neurons. These probes frequently have other useful characteristics, such as flexibility, optical functionality, or chemical sensitivity. Other materials, such as quartz, carbon nanotubes, and graphene, are also being investigated, each with its own set of features. Most crucially, these small electrodes allow for the investigation of brain activity at the subcellular level. Given the tremendous processing that occurs within neurons, this might greatly increase our knowledge of important aspects of brain function. Magnetic nanoparticles, on the other hand, have the potential to be the most powerful application. Magnetic fields are virtually completely unaffected by the human body, allowing them to be sent deep into biological tissue with no effect. Nanoparticles with the ability to transform magnetic fields into stimuli that activate neurons might be a valuable tool for modulating brain function. According to some academics, it will take roughly 10 years to overcome these obstacles and begin employing nanobots for various types of surgery. Others, though, are skeptical that this is the wisest use of scarce healthcare funds. Robot-assisted surgery is currently more expensive than traditional approaches, and nanorobotics is expected to be equally so in the near to medium future. However, nanotechnology involves more than just making things tiny. When you go down to the scale of atoms and molecules, physics operates on totally different principles, which means nanomaterials might have unusual features that enable entirely new functionality. Plasmonic nanoparticles, for example, have distinct optical characteristics that can be easily modified by modifying their size and shape. According to the scientists, 
These particles might be used to improve the sensitivity of existing optogenetic techniques, and utilizing light to stimulate and heat them up could potentially make it feasible to trigger neurons to fire with extreme accuracy. Even smaller quantum dots, nanoparticles that produce light in a variety of hues when activated by energy, are a more durable and sensitive alternative to fluorescent dyes currently employed in imaging. Because their fluorescence is also regulated by electric fields, they might possibly be employed to provide an optical readout on neuron activity. Another potential class of nanoparticles is capable of absorbing numerous low-energy electrons and converting them into a high-energy electron. Researchers employed upconverting nanoparticles to allow mice to see infrared by injecting them into the animal's retinas, where they transform incoming information into visible light. Invasive BCI necessitates surgery to insert electrodes beneath the scalp in order to communicate brain signals. The key advantage is that it provides more precise readings. Nevertheless, its disadvantages include surgery-related adverse effects. Scar tissues may form as a result of the procedure, making brain messages weaker. Furthermore, according to Abdulkader, the body may reject the implanted electrodes, resulting in a medical condition. Invasive brain-computer interface research has focused on restoring damaged vision and delivering new capabilities to persons who are paralyzed. During neurosurgery, invasive brain-computer interfaces are inserted directly into the gray matter of the brain. Invasive devices give the best quality signals of any brain-computer interface device since they are located in the gray matter, but they are prone to scar tissue buildup, which causes the signal to become weaker, or possibly non-existent, as the body reacts to a foreign object in the brain. According to some futurists, your blood may be flowing with tiny nanorobots in the next 10 years to help keep you healthy or even transfer your thoughts to a wireless cloud. They will travel within you on a molecular level, safeguarding your biological system and guaranteeing a good and long life. You're closer to the future than you believe. The word, nano, is no longer considered unique. We have become accustomed to little technologies and artificial intelligence in our daily lives. Technology has advanced dramatically, as have the potential applications of these minuscule devices. Ray Kurzweil, a futurist and Google Director of Engineering, is an ardent forecast of future events who claims to have a high accuracy record. He is one of the most vocal proponents of the idea that nanobots will be coursing through human bloodstreams in the near future. This prediction science may not be all that far off from present technology. Animals are already being tested with DNA robots to find and kill cancer cells. These programmable DNA strands are capable of moving through the circulation and injecting blood clotting medicines into blood arteries around tumors, thereby cutting off their blood supply. If human trials are successful, these tiny robots might revolutionize cancer treatment and other cell research. However, there are still many obstacles to overcome before injected nanorobots can outperform conventional types of therapy. Cancer diagnosis and treatment is one thing, but small nanobots may play a significant role in the future of medicine for other reasons. According to New Atlas, researchers anticipate that nanobots will soon be able to administer pharmaceuticals to people with excellent precision. This would enable for the delivery of microdoses just where the patient needs them, perhaps reducing the risk of unwanted side effects. Nanobots, according to university experts, might one day be employed to remove plaque in veins and alleviate nutritional disorders, among a myriad of other medicinal applications. Beyond basic treatment, nanobots may enable humans to achieve a higher level of connectedness. The notion that nanobots may one day broadcast our thoughts to the cloud is undoubtedly the most far-fetched of the numerous potential applications for nanobots. This achievement would need significant advances in neurology and nanorobotics, as well as a populace prepared to provide Google direct access to our minds. While it is possible, this capability is most likely a long way off in the future. According to the leading scientists in the field of neuroscience, there is still a long way to go. Getting nanoparticles to where we want them is difficult, as is manufacturing a big number of them without too much fluctuation. While preliminary research indicates that many nanoparticles are biocompatible, demonstrating that they are safe for human usage will take time. Forging ties between two scientific domains with nothing in common may be an even greater difficulty. Overcoming these obstacles, however, might lead to considerable advances in our capacity to record and operate massive brain networks in vivo.
which the scientists believe could have far-reaching implications for both science and treatment. So, what is your opinion on nanotechnology having improved so much, that it's slowly becoming feasible for nanobots to enter our bloodstream and start controlling or modifying parts of our body? Especially when it comes to reading or writing to our brain, people are very suspicious. Would you trust companies or the government to perform such procedures, if the payoff would be you having lots of advantages compares to people who don't? Will you volunteer to take the initial steps toward becoming a cyborg if nanobot injection becomes an option? Are you receptive to such a change? Please tell us your opinion in the comment section below. I would love to hear what you have to say about it. Thank you for watching AI News. We consistently report on the newest technologies that are shaping the future of our world. We'd appreciate you subscribing and watching our other videos. See you around and take care.